everybody, Creative Katie Karen Virgil here. Welcome to my channel. Today we have a gnome themed mini zine tutorial and I will be using digital stamps and digital sentiments. So I am going to be using the digital stamps from Elena Zinsky Art and this is her Etsy store and you can find all her digi stamps and digital downloads on her Etsy store site. The link will be in the description box. So here is the Dress a Gnome set that I will be utilizing. You can see that she's got some that are colored, some that are black and white. There are five different pages and the idea is that you can mix and match the gnome heads with the gnome bodies. You'll see how I use them. So here I've printed them off and these are the eight and a half by 11 sheets and you can see the size of these. Now, if they were in color, I've printed them in grayscale and I know for this project, I'm gonna use black and white. The wonderful thing about Digistamps is you can shrink them down and I did that to 60% and 85%. So in making my mini zine, I am using an e 11 by 17 piece of copy paper and I'm folding it hot dog style there getting a nice crisp fold and now I'm folding it in hamburger style and then it's kind of a half hot dog style going in so that you end up with eight different sections and I just want to get a nice clean fold matching the top and the bottom. And again, this is an 11 by 17 piece of paper. And it's just copy paper. So there are eight. Now I'm going to deal with this as in four different sections. But before I apply any color, I want to add some interest to the background. So I'm taking black acrylic paint, spreading it out, and I'm using two different stamps. Links to these will be in the description box. This one is a solid floral, and it's a woodware stamp that I got from Ninny's Napkins. And I'm just stamping it randomly on this page. I want something that's cohesive on all the pages. Even though I'm doing each quadrant, I'm going to do in a different color. I do want some component that is identical on all four quadrants. This one is a Stamperia stamp, again from Ninny's Napkins, and it's called Words. I love this stamp. I love the mark making that it gives. Now, when you use acrylic paint with your stamps, you need to spray them with the Murphy's Oil Soap Cup commotion and then clean them. I'm just using a stencil brush and I'm scrubbing and getting that acrylic paint out. So now I'm going to start applying color using my block and blend technique, using a makeup sponge, white gesso and a couple colors. I'm just going to blend it right on the page. Now I want just the one quadrant to be this color. So I'm just going to put a piece of paper, piece of scrap paper on the edge so I get a clean edge and I don't put paint where I don't want it. So this one I'm using bright green and bright yellow. And I'm mixing it with a little bit of gesso. The next one I used alizarin crimson and that bright yellow. So I took one of the colors from the previous and I've introduced another color. Giving this a dry, cleaning off my work area, making sure that's dry so I don't get any color transfer where I don't want it. Again, I'm masking off the bottom. Here I'm using that alizarin crimson, which I've used, and then I'm using light blue permanent. And I'm going to mix those with white gesso. Now my goal here was to not cover up all the stamping that I did. Now depending on how opaque the paints are or translucent, 
here, a lot of that stamping did get pushed back. But don't worry, I can come and put it back in if I want. It's all about those layers. So this is that second layer. So the fourth quadrant, I'm going to use the green with the light blue permanent. And the white gesso. And that's going to give different shades and tones. So with each quadrant, I've introduced a new color and kept one of the colors from the previous quadrant. And that just kind of gives you some cohesiveness from each quadrant. Now you could have applied a variety of colors across the whole background and I've done that and I'll put a link to other mini zines. Just adding a little bit of color here. I just, it's a little flat to me, so I'm just adding more. I believe I'm adding turquoise to that instead of that light blue permanent. Now we're going to have fun. We are going to stencil on each quadrant. This is the stained glass stencil from the Crafters Workshop. All the stencils I use are from the Crafters Workshop and I will link them below and they can be found at Ninny's Napkins, the TCW Shopify store, as well as Amazon. So shop around, find yourself the best deal. I'm just using different sections of this and I'm using that a lot of the same colors that I use in the background as well as white and then maybe black. Here I'm just using the center of this day or daffodil stencil. That kind of smudged a little bit so I wiped it off quickly and instead of using gesso here, I'm using white acrylic paint. It's a little more opaque. I want a brighter white. And this one is called Trumpet Daffodil. Now I know I'm going to have focal images on here. So I just want to build layers and interest. This is becoming a fast favorite of mine as a stencil. It's dotted, no, it's uh, Swiss dot. And it's one of the cake and cookie ones. But it's a good basic. Here I'm just going to add a little bit more of that stamping. A lot of it got pushed back and I want it to see it, and I want to see it in all of them, and because I'm just addicted to it right now. Adding that black really made this, that little section alive. And you can often get that to happen when you add black or white. It's the contrast. This is called Faceted Star. And I'm using white here again. And you're going to see that on each one, I'm using white and some of the colors from the background and black. This is linked tiles. And I'm using the turquoise. Sometimes the stenciling is bolder and brighter. Sometimes it is more subdued. You want both. This is the ethereal stencil. I love this motif part of this, this star. And it just brings life. Again, when you add that black, it just, the contrast, just adds so much, so much to the page. So basically in this tutorial, I am doing at least four different pages, four different backgrounds, and there will be a few more pages. And then I'm adding more stamping. I'm just rubbing acrylic paint on the stamp and adding back some of the stamping so it's a little bit more forward, a little bit more present.
This stencil is called Honeycomb, and I'm using the green on there. I love how that stamp, the solid floral stamp worked. This is screen view and I'm adding turquoise. Wasn't a color in the background, but I needed to introduce that color because the turquoise is in a few other quadrants or will be. Again, I'm building in that cohesiveness. This is another part of that ethereal stencil. And that black, did you see how that just livened this page up? A recap of all the steps in this tutorial will be at the end. And adding more stamping in there. And you can see how the ones that have added all the stenciling have really just compared to the one that isn't. Here I decided I'm going to add a little turquoise to this one because it's in all of them. And again, I'm looking for cohesion. Even though each one, each quadrant is different, I want something that's similar. So it's that word stamp, that solid floral stamp, and turquoise. Here I'm adding a little bit of pink into it. This is the Kaleidoscope stencil, one of my favorites, and I'm using again that turquoise. And this stenciling is more subdued. Now I'm adding it some of that same stenciling with white. That's another trick you can do. Do it with white and a color. Do it with two of the colors. It just makes for an interesting background. This one's dotted rings, and I'm adding the black on this one. And again, it just oh, livens this page or this quadrant up. And I'm not trying to get a perfect stencil. Remember, this is a background. Adding a little bit of screen view on this one. And I'm adding that pink, that coral that's across the way. Again, this is part of that making different pages work together. And again, you're just adding one more layer. Now, before I cut this and fold it, I am going to splatter. It's easier than doing all the separate pages. So here I'm splattering with white, and I give this a good dry, and then I come back and I splatter with gold. And I just have these little tubs that I've thinned the paint down, and they're just ready to splatter. I tend to splatter a lot, so I just find that easier. But you can just thin it down on your glass mat and splatter that. You don't necessarily need to have it all pre-done. Now I'm taking this and just refolding it, making sure the folds are crisp. And I want to cut from the middle. across and I want to make sure that I'm on the fold not on where the line is so you can see what's been cut and you're going to fold that in and now I'm just making sure all the folds are crisp and everything is fitted properly make sure everything is straight folding pressing now I'm using just a glue stick and here's you're going to have to move fairly quickly. This is going to, the whole back of this sheet is getting glue. And you need to fold it. 
it kind of can be a little bit tricky because of course it's all sticky and fold it in. That's why I folded it ahead of time to make sure that it would flow. I'm just using a brayer to press it down, make perfect contact. Now I'm just folding it, brayering to get those sharp folds. Flipping the pages, checking to make sure that everything's done. If there's a little bit of overlap that didn't quite line up, I, you can cut it out if it cut it off if it bothers you. But you just want to make sure every edge is perfectly adhered. So that's what I'm doing here. Cutting off the excess. Now I grabbed a makeup sponge and I'm just edging it all the pages in black. You know how I love framing my pages. Now I'm looking at this, I'm just, I'm adding a little bit of that words stamp from Stamperia just because I want that on every page. Lots of layers to this mini zane. So now comes the fun time of taking those gnomes that I cut. I shrunk some down to 60%. I shrunk some down to 85%. Now I'm mixing them with <coughs> my sentiment pack, Oh Gnome You Didn't, that's available at Ninny's Napkins, and just arranging them on the pages. I'm playing with Elena's. Digi stamps, mixing and matching. <coughs> now, I could have painted these, but I decided that I like the black and white. The background is colorful. I'm going to leave these as black and white. I thought I would put the saying doing gnome renovations because I like the little guy with the overalls. And then with this one in sunglass, I thought, oh, don't you gnome me? You can check out my Oh No You Didn't sentiment pack at Ninny's Napkins. You can flip through the pages and read all the sentiments. But if you love gnomes like I do, you may just want to get that. So I've got a bigger gnome and a littler gnome. And I'm gluing this down with my fluid matte medium, giving it a dry. Here, this one didn't have feet, so I'm just painting the feet on. And just darkening up the sunglasses. Aren't those gnomes just the cutest? So now I'm doing the cover. And I love this lime green yellow background. And I'm just cutting off some of the excess of this gnome. And I thought for the cover, I'm just going to do Mind Your Gnome Business. Trimming off any excess. And my sentiment pack, you can also adjust the sizes of those. And I will put a link in the I cards in the top right hand corner to my resizing video. I show you how you can do that and you can do the same thing with Elena's Digistamp. So if you were doing this on a 9 by 12 art journal page, you could make Elena's stamps big enough to fit that page as well as my sentiment stamp. Now I'm playing with this one and I thought, oh, I don't necessarily need to put bodies on these gnome heads. I like that. And I have, I took the part of one sentiment, the no matter what, 
And part of a, from the believe was from an, I'm not even sure which sentiment pack. But you can mix and match words and make up your own sentiments using the words from various sentiment packs. Then I decide, you know, I want this guy bigger, so I'm using a full size one, or is it 85%? And then I want my sentiment pack sentiment to be bigger too. So again, even on the mini zine, I'm playing with the sizes. And that makes it interesting in a mini zine because you've got different sizes and and uh, shapes. And that just builds interest to the overall. Some are bigger, some are smaller, 60%, 85%, full size. And I bubble cut this sentiment out instead of keeping all the white. And I really like the black and white shirt that this gnome had. I thought it looked good on the background, the contrast. And it matched the bold black and white. Now, the believe I stuck onto a piece of paper that I had painted black, just to give it a bubble of black, just to give it more weight or presence on the page. Now with this one, I so chose the sentiment, gnome is where the heart is. So I cut out a cart out of copy paper and I'm just putting the head of the gnome there because I really like that idea that I didn't use on the other page. So here I'm just writing the sentiment, putting that on the heart. And then gluing that down, the heart down, and then this, the gnome head on it. And this gnome head was actually colored in Elena's, but I printed it grayscale, and I love that. I'm going to glue this guy down. Now it seemed like that guy had no pur purpose, so I'm just auditioning other sentiments. Don't wander too far from gnome. Gnome your limits. And then I thought, to know me is to love me. That goes with the heart, since they're on the same page. So here I did the same thing. I painted a piece black, and I'm just giving it a frame. Now I'm taking my secure glaze pen and outlining this with the black, to get, and then doing dashes all the way around, just to make it, again, more there. Add those details. Then I decide I'm gonna do some stamping. I dug out my little heart stamps that I have a collection of. Put a heart over here. All those little things that you can add. I find doing mini zines is a great way of using up some of your smaller stamps and just having fun. Now I'm shading. I'm using the floating acrylic technique, black acrylic paint. I'm so, I apologize, this is off camera. Not all of it will be. And I'm shading. This is going to make the focal image stand out from the background. Now I do the shading on every page. I'm just not going to show you every page. There's a lot of repetitive stuff. And then I'm going to shade or edge the page. Now I decided to do the back and I'm putting a gnome on there and the sentiment, this is gnome man's land. Outlining it with my secure glaze which is dimensional and glossy and permanent when dry. 
And of course, I'm outlining all the sentiments on all the pages, all part of that finishing process, and more shading. And you can see how that little bit of shading just makes this, this focal image, the digit stamps, stand out. And here I'm just giving you a close-up. There's the black acrylic paint and my angle brush. I dip the one and tip to it. But I do have a video tutorial teaching this process. And if you're interested in learning it, that would be the best place to learn how to do this technique. It's a bit of a it's a bit difficult to learn, but once you do. It's wonderful to use. And because you're using acrylic paint, it's permanent. And you don't have to worry about it smudging or reactivating or any of that. Doing the shed edging. Adding a little bit of highlights to the shoes. And there's the Mind Your Gnome Business mini zine. I love it. They are, these digit stamps are so cute. Here I painted the beard and the nose, and you could definitely do that. I just chose to use a black and white focal image or grayscale, but you can add color to them. With paints or whatever you prefer coloring, no matter what, believe. To know me is to love me. Gnome is where the heart is. And this is no man's land. Thank you for joining me for the creation of this mini zine. Now we're going to do the recap. So we started off by stamping with acrylic paint. I used two different stamps. solid florals, and words. Once that was completely dry, I added color using block and blend. I chose four different color schemes, one for each quadrant, and they were anagalous color schemes, meaning that they are close to each other on the color wheel and they're going to blend well. Then I stenciled to create pattern, several layers, and I made sure to add black and white because that builds contrast and really livens up your page. I splattered the 11 by 17 page before I did the cutting and the folding. I did it with white and then gold. I used a digital download as the focal images, and I adjusted the size to fit the composition. Some I shrunk to 60%, some I shrunk to 85. I shaded all the focal images to make them stand out from the background. I added the sentiment to the page, which I outlined with my Secura glaze pen. And I edged the page using the floating te acrylic technique. Close-ups of each quadrant are following. Give me a comment. Which quadrant do you like the most? Until next time, go get creative.